If you don't have a vision, any road will get you there. So how can you be consistent if you don't know where you're going? And how do you know where you're going if you don't check in with the one that created you to go to a certain place and be a certain thing that you might give that he might give glory? Until next until December. As we talk about consistency, this morning we have one of our own. Pastor Devin Miller. Now, Pastor Miller is a very astute uh, and studious um, st uh, studier of the word. So he wants to, when he unpacks it, he brings enthusiasm. He brings um, an exegesis that's pulling out of the word what the Lord put into the word so that you'll be able to move forward with it. So with that being said, please join us as we share Pastor Devin Miller. Thank God for the opportunity to speak with you and to bring... Uh, information and clarification for your edification um, dealing with the word consistency. Um, and it was interesting because it was the word in, in, in the, in the instruction or, or what our uh, flyer was saying, it tied consistency with faithfulness. Um, and I wrestled with that because when we understand what, uh, what consistency shows and demonstrates consistency demonstrates an inward dedication to something uh when you are consistently doing something uh you are being faithful in your task and so in order for us to be consistent one must be faithful uh and you must be faithful to the task and the purpose assigned to you now faithfulness requires a strong belief uh, so our consistency is tied to faithfulness, which is tied to our belief. We will not be consistent and faithful to something we don't believe in. Uh, it just does not go together. <laughs> so you, 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 whatever your purpose is, you become faithful to your purpose. And once you, once you understand your purpose, you become faithful to your purpose. Once you become faithful to your purpose, you become consistent. Okay. So consistency is an outward showing of an inward dedication. Let me say that again. Consistency is an outward demonstration of an inward dedication. So the first thing you have to check is what is your purpose? And as men, we have to make sure that our purpose is aligned with the word of God. And we have to make sure that what we are aligned to is pleasing to God because we work for God if we are believers in God through Jesus Christ. And so belief has to be linked to the pattern that one sees. All right. I know the consistent. I know the faithfulness of the men in the National Men's Prayer Call because we're consistent. If they weren't consistent, I would challenge their faith. And if, they, if I challenge their faith, I would challenge their purpose. And so for us as, as men uh, striving to live a life that is pleasing in God's sight, we must understand what God is calling us to. We must understand the responsibilities that we have, and then we must be faithful to those responsibilities. And then in that faithfulness comes our consistency. Let me give you an example. If you show up to the job consistently, I will have faith that the job is getting done. Now, I still have to check. <laughs> I just can't have what we call blind faith. Just because you show up, there's still a level of accountability and responsibility that we must show to whatever we are dedicated to or whatever we are showing consistency in. But for the most part, I will if I am the supervisor and I see an employee showing up on time, doing what needs to be done. And when I go and see what he's doing, I see that he is being diligent and being faithful to the task that he has been given. Then I see consistency through faithfulness. So I see faithfulness through consistency. OK, that now, now in a spiritual connotation, if God sees consistency in your obedience, your time with him through prayer and study, then he would have faith in you to fulfill his purpose. It's all about what we do outwardly that will uh, that will show people what we have inwardly. Now, at some point, man, we have to understand that if, if we are not, I won't say comfortable, but if we are not faithful to what the purpose is that God has given to us, we will not be consistent. If, if we're not sure who we are, and as, as Brother Max said, who we are and whose we are, then it's very hard for us externally to show consistency. We will waver. 
This is why the scripture says that we can't, that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Why? Because there's no dedication to a purpose. All of us have to have something that we're dedicated to in order for us to be consistent in. If we're going to be dedicated to our families, then we have to see that our families are our purpose, is our purpose, and then we demonstrate that purpose by being consistent. And in that consistency, then we demonstrate faithfulness. As we show and demonstrate ourselves, we, we must fortify ourselves as well in the purpose for which we have been given so that we are pleasing not only to our families, not only to our children, not only to our job, but also to God. Because at the end of the day, our purpose and our consistency should be in our faithfulness to God. And, I, and, and so I saw faithfulness and consistency as two sides of the same coin. If I'm consistent, I'm faithful. If I'm faithful, I'll be consistent. The other thing that we have to see is, or the other thing we have to ask ourselves is, what is the model? <laughs> because we need to know how to do it. We are not born to do it. The Bible says that all of us are born into sin and shaped in iniquity. But it also says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. So if we are believers, then we are under a new purpose. We are under a new direction. We are under a new way in which we are to do things. And that way is, is seat in our understanding and belief and following of Christ. One of the things I always, I've been saying, I shouldn't say I always say, but I've been saying lately, is there is a difference between being Christ-like and being like Christ. A lot of us get caught up in being Christ-like. And what that means to me is that we get caught up in the physical things that Christ did, i.e. the miracles and the signs and wonders. But we have to understand that the miracle signs and wonders that Christ did was based on his purpose that was given to him by God that he was to demonstrate in the earth. And so when we understand that, then we look at the model of Christ and then we have to say, okay, what was it about Christ that I can emulate and imitate so that I can be consistent? The first thing is he was faithful to his task. He was faithful to what God had called him to. The second thing was he was consistent in fortifying and cultivating that, that purpose through prayer. Now, I would say for us, it's through prayer and the study of God's word. But because Christ was the word made flesh, he was the embodiment of the word already, which means to us, if we're going to model Christ, we must be the embodiment of the word as well. That's why Timothy said, study to show thyself approved. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Look at that scripture. It says your purpose has to be studied so that you can be consistent. The When it says a workman need not be ashamed, we have to understand as men, the only way that we cannot be ashamed of what we're doing is if we believe in what we're doing. That's being faithful. If we're faithful to our purpose, then we'll be consistent in our actions. The reason why we can't be faith, we can't be consistent in our actions is because we're not faithful to our purpose. And because, we're, and the reason we're not faithful to our purpose is that we, because we're not cultivating the purpose that God has given us, given us through prayer, talking to the one who gave us the purpose, and study, looking at the word in which and way, which way we're supposed to do the purpose that He gave us. When we get our prayer life and our study life in order and be faithful to that and be consistent to that, then we will see a transformation in our lives and we become consistent and faithful to the task that God has given us to show other people what who we are and whose we are. So when we look at the example of Christ, Christ was consistent. He did what he was purposed to do and he carried it out. Everything Christ talked about, he said, the kingdom of God is like this. The kingdom of God is like that. The kingdom of God is this. And he, he broke it down in such a way that men and or women that were in the crowd could understand it. But understand this, his purpose was not the crowd. His purpose was to teach the disciples. And in the purpose of him teaching the disciples, only three of them really got it. What that says to us is our consistency is not predicated by who sees it. Our consistency is predicated on the purpose for which we have been given. A lot of us as men, we see other men who may not be as dedicated to the word of God as we might be. We see them wavering because of instruction. What kind of instruction are they receiving in order to be faithful to the instruction and thereby be consistent in their actions? The Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. But it also says that you should write the vision and make it plain. Why? Because not only are we an inward people, but we are an external people. I can have vision all day, but if I forget it, then I'm not being I'm not going to be consistent. 
I must constantly be looking at the vision that I have. I must constantly be looking at the purpose for which I am here. And when I feel I have no purpose, I need to steal away and talk to the one that created me to regain my faithfulness in him that I might be consistent in the world. And so because he was the word made flesh, and we see that in St. John chapter 1, verse 14, he was able to demonstrate the word's consistency and demonstrate God's faithfulness in him. When Christ was baptized and by John, what did it, what happened? He was baptized. He, the Bible says, and sudden, and he, and he suddenly came up and the sky opened up and, and a dove descended and landed on him, uh, uh, representing the Holy Spirit. And the word of God said through the clouds, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. We have to understand, ladies and, uh, ladies and gentlemen, but we have to understand spe specifically, gentlemen, that our consistency is based on the reality of being recognized for our purpose. Recognition is very important when we want to be consistent. We Look, you can't go through your job and try to be faithful and consistent to your job without somebody coming to you at some point and recognizing you for your accomplishments. We can only do so much. <laughs> Without being recognized, and 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 even though there are only two, I believe, main points, uh, Pastor Raphael, you have to help me. I believe I'm right, but there's only two main points where God actually opened up the sky and said, "This is my son in whom I am well pleased." But then He said, "This is my beloved son. Hear ye Him." And when you look at those two, He was He was He was acknowledging the fact that Christ was consistent in His work and He was faithful to His purpose, and He's saying, "I acknowledge that." And so in our consistency, not only do we have to do something, but we have to do, we have to have people in our lives, mentors, brothers and sisters and family members that see our good works, as the Bible paraphrases, and I'm paraphrasing, says, see our good works and glorify God who is in heaven. Some of us men who are believers, we have a purpose. The question is, do you know what it is? And if you don't know what it is, that's where you start. Because if you don't have a vision, any road will get you there. Uh, some of y'all figure that out when you're eating breakfast. If, 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 you, if you don't have a vision, any road will get you there. So how can you be consistent if you don't know where you're going? And how do you know where you're going if you don't check in with the one that created you to go to a certain place and be a certain thing that you might give that he might give glory? We are not here to glorify ourselves. As true believers and men, as true men and believers in God through Christ, we are here to bring God glory in the workplace, in our homes, on our jobs, in the grocery store, wherever we go. We are to bring God glory in our actions. And the only way we can do that is to be consistent in the word and be consistent in our prayer life that we might understand our consistency in the world. The second thing is through his miracles. He was able to show consistency and faithfulness in God and his word by saying, I know my father hears me. Not only did God give him purpose, but he knew that the purpose came from him. So in order for the purpose to be fulfilled, he had to be faithful in knowing who gave him purpose. What I'm saying is, gentlemen, is if you don't believe in the one who gave you purpose, how can you be consistent? If you are questioning the very God that you say you serve, then how can you be consistent? And the world is full of folks that are trying to make us question who God is. What is our purpose in God? And it's not about having money, having riches, having fame and all of that. Yes, you will receive that. But you only receive that through your faithfulness and your consistency. <laughs> it is not just a promise because you believe. <laughs> and some of us think that, oh, well, I believe I can do whatever I want, when I want, how I want, but I'm going to be blessed. No. You are blessed because of your consistency and you are blessed because of your faithfulness in the one who is allowing you or yeah, who is allowing and helping you to be consistent. <laughs> so I, I bring no glory to myself. All glory goes to God. Why? Because he gives me the ability to be consistent. Why? If I was not faithful and if I did not believe, I would not breathe. Let me say that again for the people in the back. If I was not faithful and I was not consistent, then I would not be breathing right now because if I'm just taking up space, at some point, my time will be limited and cut short. You want to know how to have long life? Be consistent and be faithful. That, that, that's really the formula. Be consistent and be faithful in all that you do, and you will be blessed. I'm not going to give, I'm not going to give Reggie a million dollars if I don't see him showing up to work every day. I'm not going to give Reggie my business if I see his business is in shambles. I will look before I give. And God doesn't, God operates in my mind, God operates in the same way. Before I bless, I want to see what you're doing. Look at Job. See, okay, God, I'm trying not to. I'm trying not to take all the download that God has given me. So I, I'm gonna give it to you in pieces. Look at Job. Job was consistent and faithful. The devil, the devil was looking to see who he could devour. And God said, "Have you considered 
my servant Job. If Job wasn't faithful and consistent in what he was doing, he would have never been considered. What's the point? Sometimes we go through stuff not because of what we haven't done, but because of what we're doing. And sometimes God says, you know what? I have enough in that person that if the devil ever comes and says he wants to try that person, I'm not worried. Why? Because they've shown themselves worthy to be tested and tried. And so don't look at your tests and trials as problems, but look at them as God is saying, I put it in you. Let's see it come out of you. You can't be so heavily minded that you're no earthly good. And what that also means is that you can go to church all day and receive and receive and receive. But the only way that people know what you receive is when it is tested and tried in front of people. Paul and oh God, stop. God, Paul and Silas were consistent, even in prison. Look at the book of Acts. They said Paul and Silas, when they were praying and singing psalms while they were in prison, and they weren't just in prison, they were in the inner court. They were locked down, locked down. And God still was faithful to them. Why? Because they were faithful and consistent to him. And what happened when they, it says, and suddenly there was an earthquake and the bands were loose and the doors were open. But because of their faithfulness and consistency, Paul and Silas didn't leave because they knew that, that, that their, their purpose was to help the jailer who was going to ask a question that they didn't even know was going to be asked because the one who purposed them knew the purpose for why they were in prison. It wasn't just because of what they done. It was so that jailer, that jailer would see the demonstration of God and be able to ask the question, what must I do to be saved? We have to understand, men, that in our consistency and faithfulness, God is watching and God is placing us so that we understand that we're not here just for ourselves, but we are really here for someone else. And God will place us in situations and circumstances to not test, but to demonstrate our consistency and faithfulness to other people. So through his and, and the scripture reference to his faithfulness to the word is found in St. John chapter 10, verse 15. And so through his example, we too should be able to show our consistency in the natural by our faithfulness in the spiritual. As you become more knowledgeable of the word, you become you become trusting in the word of God, that God's word will do exactly what it says it's going to do. And in that doing, you become consistent in your walk. So how do we do this as we wrap this up? Number one, we must be consistent in our prayer life. We, the Bible says pray without ceasing. That means that you can pray even when it's right in front of somebody. Now, you ain't got to do it audibly. I'm not telling you to go around laying hands and trying to slay folks in the spirit. That may not be your calling. But you can pray and ask the one who, pur who purposed you and has been faithful unto you. You can ask in any given situation, God, what am I supposed to do? God, how am I supposed to do this? And, and, and be mindful, he will answer. Because he is he who is faithful unto him, he will be faithful unto him. Y'all get that at lunchtime. He who is faithful unto him will be faithful unto him. He who is consistent with him will be consistent with him. <laughs> okay, number two, be consistent in your study of the word. The way we become Christ-like instead of trying to be Christ like Christ is to become the word made flesh. And the only way you can do that is to study the word of God. David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin, not against man, but against thee. Who is thee? God. Number three, be faithful in our obedience to God. Consistency comes when you do what you're told. <laughs> if you waver in what God has called you to do, you can't be consistent. So when God tells you to do something, that is not the moment to say, oh, no, I ain't got time right now, God. Let me do it later. No. When he gives it to you, you do it. And when you get comfortable doing what God has called you to do in the workplace, in the job, uh, at home with your wife or spouse or, or whatever you got involved in, you get involved in. When you learn to be consistent in those things, God will be consistent with you to do those things that you are trying to be consistent in. And the only way you can be consistent in it is to study the word that he gave you to know so that you can hear what he says, because his word does not go out and come back void. God is only going to hold you accountable to being consistent by the way in which you follow his instructions and do it according to the word of God. So if you study the word of God, then you know what he's going to say. And when he says it, you know how to be obedient. And number four, be faithful in your belief in God and his purpose for your life. Faithfulness comes from trust. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into your own understanding. Then it says, in all thy ways, what? Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. If you acknowledge him, he will show you where to go. 
and in your and you become consistent in your purpose because you understand your purpose is not your own, but it is given to you in order to execute that God might get the glory out of your life. So if we are consistent with God, God will be faithful towards us as we obey him and build our faith through our consistency which in turn will allow God to be consistent with us as we build our faith in him. Let me say that again for the, for the other folks that didn't look at it right. If, and this is if, why do we say if? Because it is a choice. If, how do we know it's a choice? The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 14, I believe, or 15, it says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then... Our God is an if-then God. If you do your part, I'll do my part. If you don't do your part, I ain't obligated to do mine. That's consistency. You know, you can't sit at the edge of the bed and expect God to show you what to wear. You know what to wear. Put clothes on and go do what God tells you to do. So let me finish. If we are consistent with God, God will be faithful towards us as we obey him and build our faith through our consistency, which in turn will allow God to be consistent with us as we build our faith in him. Faithfulness is built through consistency and consistency builds faith. So gentlemen, the challenge is, and the question is, where is your faith? Because it is through your faith that you become consistent. And it has been your consistency that God becomes faithful unto you that allows you to be consistent in your faith with him. It's a circle. God is not going to put on you more than you can bear, but with everything that he puts on you, if it becomes too much, he will provide a way of escape. God is faithful. The question is, are we faithful to him? And as we are faithful to him and consistent in our faithfulness, then God will be consistent because he is faith. And the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. May God bless you. Gentlemen. Uh, listen, I, I ain't gonna even try. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go down this real quick. First and foremost, Devin, awesome job. And I'm and I don't say this lightly. It was dope. It was amazing. Thank you for that. Love the passion. Let me let, let me get to my close. So if I can wrap this up, gentlemen, we have been reminded by Pastor Miller that consistency is an outward demonstration of an inward dedication. Consistency is an outward demonstration of an inward dedication. And in a very interesting way, it's, it's tied to a symbiotic relationship with your faithfulness. Because in that, it produces, when you are in consistent and, and then you tie it to your faithfulness, it produces a clarity in purpose. It produces uh, understanding in your instructions. It builds trust in the relationships from both sides. And then it delivers a committed delivery. It, it, it gives you a committed delivery. You know, and when we think about this in every company that has shown consistency in their product or in their service, then we uh, automatically have a connection to it. They get our loyalty. They get our business because we it's all about the consistency in it. I'm consistently delivering this. There is a level of predictability that not only God needs from us, but the world, your your wife, uh, your children, your business, your ministry is a level of predictability. When men can get to a point where they'll say on the flip side of it, well, you know, pastor always get here late. So, you know, we can go ahead and do this. Or, you know what, we need to make sure that they have a full understanding of our delivery system, that our consistency in. And when we look at this, the whole message about what Devin has delivered is for us to examine what that consistency looks like. What is our output? When you take, take a step back from yourself, what are you consistently showing? And because sometimes we, may have, we need to make an evaluation. Do you have a, um, um, in a lot of cases, a flawed delivery system? Is it not consistent or, or on the other side of it? Is it something where you have a passive aggressive nature that we know that you are consistently in that, even though you're called to be the man of God, right? And you're doing things that, that doesn't benefit or show himself. And just the position where Devin was telling us that we are just supposed to Christ, not another man. I, you, we're supposed to be Christ-like and then exuding all the behavior that Christ did. And if it's not consistent in that path, then we're off the path. Right now, the other thing that we have over here is that Devin has given us a four step plan. If you are off with your consistency in this space, for whatever reason that may be, that might be because we just in a season that we ain't motivated no more. It might be in a space that I lack of disciplines and we procrastinate and some stuff that we just had not figured out yet. You know, maybe it might be because you have a lack of accountability 
in these places as well. That's why this 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 membership is so good because we have a group of men that are consistent in what we've been doing over the eleven years. But the four step program is simple: prayer. First thing up, we want to communicate. And, com- and remember this, gentlemen: prayer is a dialogue, not a monologue. You, as we're talking and, and speaking to God, what we need, we also need to give Him uh, uh, our listening. We're supposed to listen. We're supposed to receive that. Devin has told us that we should study. We need to study the word. We need to sow it in our hearts. And so it is our blueprint to how we should live. We, we know the instructions of that. Then he gets our obedience. When Once God tells you what to do, again, you're praying, you're communicating with God. And when God tells you to do something, you actually do it. You're being obedient. And so in these places where you got all in your feelings and you didn't gave up on your relationships, you didn't gave up on your ministries, you didn't gave up on your children, you didn't gave up, you ain't coming to church no more, you ain't getting there on time, you gave up on it because some people, Lord, Lord, you know I love you, but your children, God, whoa, your children, I don't want to do it no more. Well, you and your feelings, you need to be getting into your obedience. It don't matter what you feel. Your feelings ain't facts, and we need to get you back in the place that God has designed you. And the last thing, that, which I think is one of the more important things, is your belief. A byproduct of consistency, which is tied into your faithfulness, you have a belief system that is heightened. You have more trust, and that, that's on both sides of the fence of your relationship. God can trust you more. They haven't said that. It's, he is a, we'll have to write that down, God, he's an if-then God, Right? He is even my favorite scripture, Devin. I don't know if you know this, is uh Matthew 18 and 18. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. But it's predicated on what you do first. If then you bind things, then I'll bind it here. If then you lose things, I'll lose it here. And so it is that trust and belief system that I already know God got my back. So I need to move in my faith. And then I need to be consistent in it. And then that builds a byproduct of trust in between the races. And we can walk strong. We can walk heavy. You know, you can always tell when you walk into a room and you know we were room of alphas. You walk in there and you, you have an expectation of what's going on. But when you don't have trust that God got your back, you ain't going to walk in there strong. You ain't going to walk in there heavy like Reggie Tanner do. You ain't going to walk in there into Myrtle Beach and then, and then get your clubs up and you expect you can, you're going to get uh, the, the record over there. It's a difference. It is a predication that is belief in your belief system that can cr- creates consistency. It was an amazing word, Devin. Outstanding job, brother. With that being said, gentlemen, take an examination. The question on the table again is what's keeping you from being consistent? And you owe it to not only yourself, but to God to find out if you are off the path of your purpose and how you serve God's people, God's daughter, God's grandbabies, uh, your mission on this planet. It is all predicated in you understanding that. And if you are off, this is the opportunity to get it back together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this amazing word today. Father, I pray over the man of God that delivered it. I thank you for giving us a word that makes us think and and reconsider where we are with our consistency. And Father, I pray that every brother on this line moves, not only be a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word as well. Father, we thank you for everything. Grow us up and so we can be the men of God that you purpose us to be. It's in your service that we pray, Father, with the expectation that we are moving forward in our faith. And we thank you for always grabbing our hands and taking us in the right direction. In your son Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Go for it, Dr. Dr. Miller, uh, everybody in your house ought to be up. Yeah. He didn't (laughs) holler me out my sleep. I I came in here. Boy, you know a preacher when he got up on him. I knew he was ready. Uh, Listen, I was with him last night. He wasn't ready last night, but he was ready this morning. That's, it's amazing what God can do. He probably, probably chopped up last It was some chicken wings. Yeah, he ate outstanding. Last outstanding, David. Outstanding job, David. Outstanding. Thanks. Yeah. Now, that's, that's, that's how we start off a month. Yes, sir. Awesome job, Doc. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry for the... I got a double thing going on right here. Sorry about that. No, we got you. All right, you're good. I'm looking over that brother Reacher picture. He got all that St. Augustine in the background. You living good. In my backyard ain't that pretty. <laughs> I see you. Awesome job, gentlemen. I ain't gonna hold y'all up. We'll yep, see y'all great. on Thursday. All right. God bless. Peace. All God bless. Great work this morning, Doc. Great work. Thank you. Great work.